In this video, we are going to explore CPRO's user interface. The CPRO hand unit features a 1.2 inch multicolored screen, which can be navigated using the integrative thumb wheel or the capacitive TFT touch interface. Either method can be used to navigate between the CPRO's main page displays, with each key feature having its own main page. You can enter the main menu by double tapping the screen or pressing the home button twice. From here, you can access all of the CPRO's menus and submenus. The thumb wheel and user button can also be used to navigate and select menu options. The main menu provides access to general settings, including channel, region, measurement unit, brightness, and vibration feedback. In the radio menu, you can disable the radio module when shooting in an environment where a wireless connection is not permitted or possible. For example, underwater. The channel menu lets you choose one of 14 channels. If multiple C-Pro systems are being used on a set, you can select a different channel for each system. It is also important that you select the same channel on the C-Pro motor or C-Pro cable. The region settings allow the operator to adjust the power output of the C-Pro's RF module to ensure compliance with regional regulations. C-Pro offers 20 active regions. Once selected, the C-Pro motor or C-Pro Cayman will change to match this automatically. Please note, C-Motion recommend you always select the correct region setting for the region you are shooting in. In the unit section, you can choose if lens data is displayed in Imperial or metric. C-Pro will calculate and display lens data in your chosen unit, even if the lens file was created using the other. In the brightness menu, you can set automatic activation and automatic brightness. This is made possible by integrating a light sensor. Also in the brightness menu, you can manually control the individual brightness of the display, keypad, knob, slider, and joystick. For example, if you are only using a focus motor, you can set the brightness of the slider and joystick to zero to help save on battery. The CPRO hand unit is also equipped with an internal motor which enables a vibrating function for haptic feedback. In the future, this will also support digital marker feedback. The touchscreen and the thumb wheel can also be deactivated to prevent accidental changes while shooting. Finally, CPRO Stealth Mode is a great feature that can remotely turn off the lights on all connected motors and accessories, including C-Finder 3. This feature is especially handy when shooting in dark conditions or surrounded by reflective surfaces. In the Controls submenu, you can find settings for the three control modules, the knob, slider, and joystick. Here, you can choose which axis you want to control with each of the three control modules, as well as select specific settings for each. In the knob menu, you will find the submenu for the pre-marked rings. Here, you can choose one of five pre-marked rings in either metric or imperial. If you're using handwritten or blank marker rings, simply choose the plain ring from this menu. The lock menu allows you to set an electronic lock. Although the knob can still rotate, the motor will not respond. This is ideal between takes. The lock function can also be assigned to one of the user buttons. The slider menu is similar to the knob menu. First, you choose the axis you want to control with the slider, typically iris. Then, if available, choose one of the pre-marked marker strips that best matches the open T-stop of your lens. Again, if you're using handwritten marker strips, simply use plain in the menu. 
And finally, the lock function. This activates an electronic lock to the iris scale. This is ideal during takes if you don't want to rack iris. If you are only controlling a focus motor with your hand unit, we recommend you set the slider and zoom axis to off. This will deactivate the backlit illumination on the slider module and zoom LEDs. In the zoom menu, select the axis you want to control and then set the sensitivity of the joystick. This is effectively setting the amount of pressure required to run the motor. Because the system uses digitally encoded motors, you can set the maximum speed of the motor from super fast and snappy to slow and silky smooth changes in focal length, or anywhere in between. And finally, the lock function presents the zoom motor from being moved unintentionally. Swiping from left to right on the touchscreen can take you back one menu level at a time. With the lens menu, you can handle all your lens data. From here, you can load, unload, create, delete, or edit lens data. However, we will cover lens handling in a separate video. In the motor menu, you can change the settings of each connected motor. You can set the axis on which the motor is connected to on the lens, as well as the direction, which refers to which side of the lens the motor is mounted. This is important for the way it interacts with programmed lens data. You can also set the ramp, which is how each motor responds to its assigned controller. For example, for a fast and snappy linear focus response, set the ramp to minimum. But for a gradual non-linear start and end, set the ramp to maximum. You can also set the torque of the motor to best suit the friction of the lens. This varies from lens to lens, as well as if you're using a C-Force Mini, a C-Force Plus, or a C-Pro motor. C-Pro is one of the only lens systems which offers an advanced internal rangefinder menu. Within the system, you can remotely change the offset between the camera sensor and the measurement sensor. You can also set minimum and maximum limits. Offsets and limits are both calculated internally. When using a Cinetape or UDM, these settings will not be displayed on the Cinetape or UDM's displays and only on the C-Pro hand unit. The limit function allows you to set a range where autofocus is active. Measurements outside of this range will be displayed, but the focus will not be tracked automatically. Through the sensitivity setting, you can set the responsiveness of the rangefinder. The higher the sensitivity, the quicker the usable measurement data will be updated and displayed. This also results in faster autofocus tracking. Similarly, the lower the sensitivity, the slower the usable measurement data will be updated and displayed. This also results in smoother autofocus tracking. When you combine lens data with distance data from any connected rangefinder, you can activate autofocus via the hand unit. Autofocus can be triggered through the hand unit by pressing one of the user buttons to one of three focus modes. These modes are press, toggle, and pinpoint. Press activates autofocus only when the assigned button is being pressed. When released, the focus motor will return to the corresponding position of the focus knob. Toggle allows you to turn autofocus on or off by pressing the assigned button. And finally, pinpoint. This is our newest autofocus trigger. This works similarly to the way the press function works, but when the button is released, the focus motor stays at the last measured distance. If the button is pressed again, the motor will move to the new measured distance. However, the operator can also regain control by slowly overriding the position with the nub. If you are working with Seafinder 3, you can also remotely activate the red laser pointer to check your alignment. Of course, this can also be assigned to a user button for quick references. You can also independently activate stealth mode for C-Finder 3. In the buttons menu, you can assign your preferred C-Pro feature or shortcut to one of seven user buttons. All assignable buttons, with the exception of back button 1, are backlit. However, if a button is not assigned to a feature, it will not be eliminated. To quickly view what each button has been assigned to, an overview is available on the main page. By pressing and holding the select button while on any main page, it will automatically open the corresponding menu page.
Finally, we have the About menu. This displays the firmware installed on the hand unit and all connected LBUS devices and accessories. Although it is grayed out in this video, you can also update the firmware for all CPRO devices through the About menu as well as perform factory resets. Yeah.